got it two and three quarter inches for the leaf. We said we wanted four and three quarter inches for the scrub. And then we said we wanted a long weld. We didn't put a number on that. I'm going to put a number on that now, and I'm going to say I want an inch and a half unforged material either side. So let's draw this down. I'm going to have, from my experimentation, I found that my leaf grew half an inch during manufacture. I need two and one quarter inches for a two and three quarter inch leaf. Does that make sense? So I need two and a quarter inches here, plus a one and a half, plus a one and a half, plus whatever, we've not worked that out yet, I need for my scroll. Okay, but I do know that my scroll is four and three quarter inches long from the tip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that together, and I know that that is as four. So bear with me a little while. Four and three quarter, plus one and a half, plus the one and a half to get back, plus two and a quarter. So what does that make? Come on, something quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. and a quarter. Seven and eight. We've got three here. Five and a quarter, plus four and three quarters, eight. Let's call it ten inches, just for some right. So I'm going to come here now, and I'm going to start from the corner of the anvil, and I'm going to measure out ten inches. I'm going to come back four and three quarter inches, and then I have one and a half, one and a half out, and if I'm right, I should have one two and a quarter inches left. That's my leaf, that's the scroll, and that's either side of my nick and fold. Are you with me so far? When I want to do a short taper, I'm going to step forward with my hammer leg, and I really want to get on the end and almost upset it back into itself. Okay? So a nice short taper. Don't make it long. Did I say make it short? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got the idea. Now what I'm going to do, you can come here to the uh, to the bit where you can work here. I'm just going to work off this radius edge. I'm just going to draw that out to a taper. So now it's got a tapered point. So obviously I've grown my taper because I put that point on it. That's why I started off with as short a taper as I could. A little bit. You'll notice that top surface is slightly cramped. It's not a straight taper. Bear in mind we're making a leaf. Leaves tend to be rounded on the edges, so no need to make it straight. Stick out about three quarters of an inch from this side, not from the top of the arm. Drive it down. Notice I'm keeping the leaf off the anvil. gives me some mass. I'm going to spread the leaf later when we bevel it. And that gives me some mass to make more of a leaf from by keeping the leaf off the outside. Is I can put the forged scroll on the scroll mark. I can come back. That's the distance of the scroll. That's my nick fold well. That's the start of my leaf. That's the material I need for my leaf. Okay, and now I can make a good work. It's on a forged scroll. So I came out here, that's my four and three quarters of my forged scroll. I then said I wanted to come back to some point and I put a number on that of an inch and a half. That's where I'm going to nick the bar, fold it back on itself and weld here and then add to that the distance from my leaf, which I said the leaf measured two and three quarter inches. But from our practice this morning, we found we only need two and one quarter inches to make a two and three quarter inch leaf. So I've got my scroll, 
Bottom of the scroll to the weld mark. Weld mark back to the bottom of the leaf and two and a quarter inches to make the leaf material. So I can do that now. <laughs> scroll, bottom of the scroll, weld mark, bottom of the leaf, top of the leaf, that's my cut mark. Any problems with that? So I'm staying with the scroll, but I've laid out all of my steps. Okay, so I know I, I can cut the bar off, turn it around and go to work. All I'm going to do is, while I have the heat in the other end, I'm going to use the heat. I'm going to bend the scroll to 90 degrees with the step on the bottom of the bend. Keep that bend as tight as you can. I want it to look like a piece of half inch ground to fit in there, not like a piece of one inch ground to fit in there. Okay, so here I go. Put this stuck out, about three eighths or so, just drop the hand as you lower the other hand. Okay, give a nice, tight bend. If it happens that you end up with some bending down here, take it out. Okay, go into a nice tight bend. Now we're going to bevel the scroll. We're going to bevel from the center punch side. There are four of these scrolls, two go to the left, two go to the right. When I bevel, I come around the outside first. Then go on the inside. this all again a little later. That's my beveled leaf. Okay, I've not got blown back yet and I don't have a scroll yet. Now when you do the blowback, you can, the easiest time to do the blowback is when it's straight before you put that bend on. Or you can do it now, come in here and just knock the end back, whichever. I don't really care, but that's not what I need. I'm going to stop here. You can put the blowback on if you want, but stop here, don't roll the scroll up. Now what I'm going to do, is pass this all the way through, I know I have to take a heat on the leaf to make the leaf. So no problem taking the heat, a heat in that area to sever that now with a hot cut and go to work. Make sure you correct growth thickness, stay on the end, draw the end down to about two, uh, sorry, about three eighths of an inch. Get rid of the corners. should have grown a quarter of an inch, which it has. I'm at two and a, two and a half now. So that's getting better. <coughs> you can see my center punch mark here. So at least now I have, I know where to stop. And I should be getting near my two and three quarter inches. I'm... Okay, there's my bomb. I should be about... Yeah. 
I'm about an inch, inch and a bit at the base there, and I'm two inches or thereabouts across the widest point. Now, <clears throat> you can leave it like that, or there's another step you can do to sweeten it up a little bit. And that's to firm up that shoulder on the inside of the leaf. And I like to do this. And really, if this is an outside application leaf, I will always do it, because it helps the water run away from the bottom of the leaf. Otherwise, it's just a gravity feed. All the water and the dust in the world is going to collect that. And it will also give you an opportunity to push out those wings at the bottom of the leaf. So here we go. With the texture down now, put this on the round edge of the angle, drive, and now rotate this away from your hammer, come back to where you were, pull it towards the hammer, If everything's gone reasonably well, you should have a somewhat of a crowned shoulder and around about the center punch now. We're going to nick fold well from the other side. So your cupping is going to be on the shoulder side. Everything is on the center punch side. Don't work around from the other side. Everything we've done is on the center punch side. I start at the widest point, drive that down, and then move to the base, hitting the base, then move back along and out to the end. Just to create my channel. I have a channel, which is strong. I have parent stock, which is strong. But where there is no channel and no parent stock, right there at the shoulder, <coughs> is the weakest point. Keep the heat out of the weakest point. I want the curling of the leaf to take care, to take to happen in the top half. I want this bottom half to be straight, ruler straight. See my hammer went around there. Now my hammer's staying fairly still and I'm engaging the tongue. Here. Starting to get that curl. Now, I want to move that further up. If I work here and come back to where that curl locks on and I'm dropping my hand, what's going to happen to that curl? It's going to pull out. It's pull out. It's pull out. Okay, so now I've got that bit established. Let's just work up to somewhere close to it. Otherwise, what's going to happen is every time you come up and work, you're going to pull that end out. Okay. So you work up, work up, work up. That means you can't move on until this bit is right, because you can't get back in there to fix it. You can, but you know, just make it right. Get the nice curl first, and then work back. See that kink? Look at the way the leaf reads now. It looks like I'm being quite successful. You can see I obviously went too far, because I took out my curl. But when I straighten that, it doesn't read right at all. So what I'm going to do now to re-establish the end is come back in here and work the end. That's the beauty of having this olive section. So this is my sort of second generation, if you like, with these uh, sloping wings. And that allows me to work here and still capture the edges of the leaf as I'm doing this. If these wings were straight up and down as I bent over, the path of least resistance is for that channel to open. So that's why these wings are leaning forward.